Mestre Serena Guzman, Paz and Vida, colleagues, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. We need good governance at all levels to overcome the current global financial crisis, which is threatening to become a global economic crisis. We need good governance. At the national level, many governments in the world are not functioning properly. Large numbers of the citizens are forced by economic hardship to migrate to other countries in search of a better livelihood. In countless villages around the world, far from the influence of central authorities, there's oppression and injustice. In a sense, the struggle for good governance is a story of mankind. Unlike animals like apes and chimpanzees, our social structures are only partly hardwired in our DNA. We are a species that can organize ourselves in almost limitless ways, depending on our history and the challenges we face. And we do this through culture and institutions. The human beings living today are not much different genetically from the human beings living, let us say, 2,000 years ago. But our social organizations have become much more complex. In 2,000 years' time, provided we have not destroyed ourselves, we would have developed vastly different social systems to colonize states. Against the sweep of history, democracy represented a major advance in human organization. It has never been the only way to organize human society. Even in Greece, when it first flowered, it was a fragile innovation which did not last. Conditions only became right many centuries later in Western Europe for democracy to strike deep root and to spread. In some ways, we can see the First World War, the Second World War, and the Cold War as a contest between the democratic idea an autocracy of one kind or another. It was principally a struggle between Western society, but its effects quickly influenced the rest of the world. In China, Dr. Sanyat Sen founded the Sangin Tui. Here in Indonesia, he created the Bodhi Tongo movement. But it led eventually to the end of empires and the establishment of new nation states. Democracy is therefore a broad current in human history. It takes different forms, often in competition with one another. It is a means to achieve better governance, never an end in itself. What is important is to put human beings, living communities, at the heart of everything we try to do. The word demos, referring to people, has as a specific context people living in community. We associate counting votes with democracy, but there are so many ways to structure a voting system which can lead to very different outcomes. The key is good governance. Democracy should always be structured to facilitate good governance, never to make it harder. Here, I'm making a case for a pragmatic view of democracy instead of an ideological view. Singapore's democracy is a work in progress. We inherited laws and institutions from the British, which we have adapted to our own circumstances. And being a small city-state with no natural resources, except people and a good geographical location, we have to be pragmatic. We can only make a decent living if we provide a service to others and in the neighborhood where we live in, is in peace. Broadly speaking, Singapore democracy serves three objectives. First, the rule of law. Good governance requires the rule of law. Without proper laws defining the limits of freedom, there can be no freedom. Without good laws protecting property rights, investments will not be made and long-term development will be affected. Having good laws on the statute books is not enough. Laws must be implemented and enforced fairly and consistently in a transparent manner, 
or they risk becoming dead letters or worse, instruments of oppression. There must therefore be some separation of power, powers and an independent judiciary. And corruption is always a problem that has to be combat combated. Second, a balance must be struck between the short term and the long term and between the interests of the individual and the interests of the community. Electoral politics put pressure on governments to respond quickly to the needs of voters. Nobel laureate Dr. Amartya Sen pointed out that families in India have become a phenomenon of the colonial past because Indian politicians today know they will be thrown out of office if they did not respond quickly to food shortages. All this is good, but the problem with electoral politics is that the time horizon of political leaders shortens and pandering to the demands of special interest groups may be unavoidable. Larger and longer term considerations are often set aside as politicians concentrate on winning the next elections. It is worth remembering that the word demagoguery has the same root word as the word democracy. There's always a strong temptation to be populist, to borrow from the future, because the future has no votes, instead of investing in it. The mass media can either moderate or accentuate this dynamic. Without clear rules, newspapers and TV stations can be forced by competitive pressure to outdo each other in sensationalism, and the result is more heat than light. In Singapore, we require newspapers and TV stations to report accurately. As opinion multipliers, it's important that what they multiply is accurate and not distorted. There's also a new media which became a major factor in the election of Barack Obama. All over the world, countries are grapp grappling with how this new media should be managed as it is too edged. When all is said and done, 